And here is our example. The set 6z, well, I'll, I'll just say what it is. So 6z, this is the set of all things in the form 6k, such that k is in z. I haven't formally defined what it means to have like a number in front of z here, but I think, I hope you guys are getting it. It's just, you can think of it as six times everything in z. Um, and then we'll look at, we'll call this uh, A. And then we'll call B, that's going to be the set of all x and the natural numbers such that there exists a k such that x equals 3k and there exists a t such that x equals 2t. So this is going to be B. And actually, I'm sorry, I want to write this differently. But I'm going to rewrite this, don't worry. B, what I'm going to write it as is going to be 3z intersect 2z. We haven't defined this yet, but by the end of the day, we will. And what that's going to end up meaning is going to be an x and then, and actually, in the integers, x and the integers such that there exists a k such that x equals 3k and there exists a t such that x equals 2t. I'll just give you guys a little preview, right? If there exists a k such that x equals 3k, that means this means x is in 3z. There's just teaches that x equals 2t. This means x is in 2z. So if B is the set of all X that are both in 3Z and 2Z. That gives you an idea of what the intersection is, right? Intersection, we've heard that before. It's everything in both. We'll see that in a second. But anyway, this is what B is going to be. And here's my claim. Sixty, or I'll say A, is equal to B. And here's how we prove it. So the way you prove A equals B is we use the formal definition. And that is A equals B if and only if A is contained in B and B is contained in A. A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So the way you prove A equals B is you first prove this guy and then you prove this guy or whatever direction you want to go. And so what you do with that is, and really a lot of people write it, instead of saying B is contained in A, they write the other way around. They say A is a superset of B. A contains B. Same thing I just wrote down, except I just kept the order of A and B the same and just changed that from a, of a, from a, is contained into a contains, I guess, if you write it. Hope that makes sense. So the proof, though, goes like this. We're first going to prove that A is a subset of B. We're just going to prove that. So I'll say here, in pink, just so let you guys know what's going on. We want to show that A is a subset of B. And by the way, um, this symbol I put in parentheses here, this is not just for me. This is a, a standard math technique. You guys should write this in your homeworks and tests and things like that when you're proving this side of the container. So we want to show that A is in B in this first side. And so the way we do that is, well, how do we prove that A is a subset of B? Well. A being a subset of B means that every X in A is in B. That's what it means by definition, right? Um, you can write that in, in green somewhere in case we forgot. Uh, a and B is equivalent to for all X in A, X is in B. Universal statement, right? So the whole thing we did last class, which is called, this is called the element method is by just showing that every element of A is an element of B. That's why it's called the element method. And so what we're going to do here is let X be any arbitrary but particular element of A. Now, to finish the proof, we want to show that it's in B. Well, what do we know about elements of A? So A is 6Z, 
So the one thing we know about elements of A in general is that they can be, that there are multiple of six, right? So thus, by definition of A, X equals six K for some K in Z. All right. So we have this X, which is an A. And we know it could be written as 6K for some integer K. We want to show A is in B. So we want to show that this is also in B. This X is in A, we want to show it's also in B. So how can we show that this X equals 6K is in B? the bystander effect so many of you today. So in order to be in B, every element of B, right, this is just basically saying X is divisible by three. And this is basically saying X is divisible by two. So if X equals six K, we need to show that means X is divisible by three. It can be written as three times something. Mm -hmm. And we need to show it's divisible by two if you're in as two times something. So what's 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 our strategy here? This is a homework. What you try to do? I'm not frozen, by the way. I'm still here. Someone throw an idea at the wall. What do we got here, people? So we have x equals 6k. I want to show it equals 3 times something. Well, we know that x equals 6k is the same thing as x is equal to 2 times 3k, right? Thank you, Herman. That does both at once. Yes. Note, x equals 6k, and 6 equals 2 times 3. This is going to be 2 times 3 times k, which I'll do 2 first because I wrote in this order. This is 2 times 3k. And then I'll say since 3 and k are integers, and Z closed under multiplication. Because we have that, 3K is in Z. Um, let T equal to 3K then t is an integer such that x equals 2t. So proving for two first, easy. Um, yeah, it's all good, right? Because, because x equals six times something, it definitely equals two times something. We do the same thing with three. I'll say note, I'll say further, like that word further. Further, x equals 6k, which equals 3 times 2k. Let, I'll call it k prime, equal 2k. Note, z closed under multiplication and two and K and Z. Thus, um, K prime, which equals two K is in Z. Hence, um, X equals three K prime 
for some integer. Okay, prime. It's an exclamation mark. It's like it's a prime period. There we go. So we know that x can be written as 3k and x can be written as 2t for some integers k and t. Therefore, x is in b. Right, because B is just all integers that can be written like this. So I'll say, hence, or I'll say, therefore, since X equals um, 2T and 3K prime, X is in B by definition of B. And the very last line here, Thus, thus, uh, A's and B. So all of this work was just to prove that A is contained in B. To prove that A actually equals B, we have to show it goes the other way around too. Well, any question on this first part? Good, I think we're quiet but understanding. It's oh, good, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, now we need to prove this part, the opposite of the containment. We, we, we literally write this right here. And for sake of room on the board, I'm gonna erase this first part, but you guys would keep going in one line here, or keep going to the same proof. Any, will this upset anybody if I erase? We're good, okay, no one screamed. Um, so, just testing the waters. So let's go ahead and do this right here. Um, so here we wanna show that A contains B. We wanna go the same way. So trying to show that A contains B, what this is saying is that every element of B is in A. So once again, using the element wise, we're gonna say, let X be any arbitrary slash particular element of B. Just like that. Then by definition of B, um, there exists a K and z such that x equals 3k and there exists a t in z such that x equals 2t and this is literally by definition right x is a set of all things that satisfy this so if x is in b well then it looks like this all right now we have the slightly harder task of showing that if x equals 3k and x equals 2t, x has got to equal uh, 6 times something. And here's where I will take over, because this actually uses that pretty interesting thing that we proved before, but I won't expect you guys to necessarily pull this out of your um, notebook. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so Let's say uh, if this is the case, if we know this is true, let's notice this. Thus, 3k equals 2t, which implies that 2 divides 3 times k. Actually, we can play with this. Three times K, that equals what? Two times K plus K. Right? Since two divides two K plus K, which is that, and two clearly divides two K, then two divides K 
by theorem from homework, I believe. Right? We put that one theorem that said if it divides the whole thing and divides one part, it must divide the other part. Yeah. I think, I think this makes sense too, right? When we think about it, this is saying 2k plus k is a multiple of two, and 2k is a multiple of two. So that means this little bit left over has got to also be a multiple of two. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another way to look at it is this is saying that 2k plus k is even, and 2k is obviously even. And so this is saying even plus something is an even, that means that something's an even. Hey, how this makes sense. So two divides k from theorem for run assignment. Uh, therefore, therefore, um, x, or therefore, uh, k equals two uh, c for some c and z. That's just def that's definition of divisibility, right? Two divides k. K equals 2c. Then x equals 3k. So we're going to go back to the 3k, but now you know something special about k, and that is k equals 2 times c. This is 3 times 2 times c, which equals 6c. And what, why is that important? Well, that's exactly what we want to show to show that x is the element of 6z, an element of a up here. It's just any integer times 6. Ergo, sorry to use therefore, ergo, um, since C is in Z, um, X, which equals six C is in A, by definition, hence B is contained in A or A contains B, same thing. Any questions on this? So this, was, this, side was, this side was a little bit harder. You had to be a little bit creative, right? And finding and figuring out why the heck two divided K. Once you know that X equals three K and you know that X equals two T, really the thing you need to be thinking about to get X, to get that six divides X, is you get that either two divides k or three divides t. And both have to happen here um, via what we call, I believe, Euclid's lemma. Yes, it's Euclid's lemma. And Euclid's lemma in general, just a trick to memory lane, says that if p is a prime, if p prime and p divides a b, then P divides A or P divides B. I believe we actually proved that. And um, so clearly here, since for example, three K equals two T, well, that means three divides two times T. Well, three is a prime that divides this product, meaning three has got to either divide two or T or both, but it doesn't divide two. So it's got to divide T. Really random thing. We got around in this case, but in general, you could use Euler's formula or something like that. Euler's, not Euler's, Euclid's. Euler did everything else. Euclid did that. Um, but anyway, so we, we proved the containment in the one direction. Now we're containing the other direction. So then we can end off by saying, therefore, since A contains B and B contains A, we're at the edge of that glare. Look at that. Um, A equals B. Square it, done. Any questions? This idea is beautiful and weirdly powerful. And that is, you would think that showing two sets are equal would be easy, but it's really not. Because especially like these are infinite sets, right? Once you're dealing with infinite sets, sometimes they might look weird and differently from each other. When you're dealing with those things, it's not at all obvious that two sets are the same sometimes. But this idea of showing they contain each other is a really nice in and it totally works. We good? Good. I feel like you guys don't understand 
how good of an end this is. But um, but yeah, this is like if you're at a job fair and uh, you know, whenever you go to a job fair, it's always weird to start the conversation with the person there, you're trying to find something or whatever, and then you find out that the person at that job fair, like, is also a really big fan of that really funny show that not a lot of people know about but you and then you're clicking you got that in now you know how to talk to him now you know what to go i don't know the point is what well, was best that that's really what I, what I mean by foothold is that the double containment gets you in the door it gives you something to grab onto and something to do um which is interesting i don't know why i thought of it as job fairs i hate job fairs <laughs> 